I'm positive that you've heard of ChatGPT, but did you know that Microsoft and Google have created AIs that make ChatGPT look like child's play? These AIs are called Bing AI and Bard, and are like ChatGPT, except they can access the internet. But which one of these amazing AIs is best? Well, today we're gonna find out which AI is the most useful by putting these two AI titans to the test by comparing their ability to search the web, the speed of their responses, how well they interpret complex tasks, their ability to answer questions, and of course, the accuracy of those answers. But before we jump into comparing these two AI systems, here's a quick rundown to get you up to speed on AI in 2023. In November of 2022, OpenAI kicked off the artificial intelligence race by releasing ChatGPT3, which took the world by storm and had a million users within five days of launching. For perspective, it took Instagram 75 days and Spotify 150 days to reach that same benchmark. But ChatGPT has one major weakness that really limits its usefulness, and that's that it can only access information from before 2021. So in January, Microsoft announced that it was going to be investing billions more dollars into ChatGPT's creator, OpenAI, and would incorporate ChatGPT into its future products. A couple of weeks later, on February 7th, Microsoft debuted their AI-powered Bing, and everyone was shocked. The amount of productivity this new Bing had was unparalleled. Google, worried about falling behind, hastily announced their own version of an AI search engine, which they called Bard, which in my opinion is just kind of a weird name, but whatever. To say things nicely, Google's announcement did not go nearly as well as Microsoft's. Technical errors and awkwardness plagued the presentation, and everyone left it thinking that the AI search engine race was Bing's to lose. But that was months ago, and in the AI space, months are like years because of how quickly things are developing. For example, GPT-3 scored in the bottom 10th percentile on the bar exam, while GPT-4, announced only a couple months later, scored in the top 10th percentile. So which is actually better, and can we really research and learn faster with these technologies? Well, today we're gonna find out. Hello, my friends, my name is Kobe Hunter, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I love learning about the business world, researching cutting-edge stuff like AI, and then sharing it with you guys. So if you like learning about business strategy and technology, consider clicking that little subscribe button, as I produce two long-form videos like this one each and every week. And if you like this video, you're probably gonna like those videos too. So consider subscribing. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, and now let's talk about how we're gonna figure out if Bing or Bard is better. We're gonna give each artificial intelligence a score out of 10 for each of these abilities as we go through the research process. So without wasting any more time, let's start with criteria number one, their ability to search the web. One of the biggest perks of these search engines over the classic ChatGPT is their access to the internet. So let's ask it a question that it would need internet access for. Recently, Vice Media declared bankruptcy. So let's ask it, why did Vice Media go bankrupt? Bing will search the web for your question and then spits out a short paragraph explaining that they filed for bankruptcy due to a bearish economy for digital media companies with a quote from a business leader saying that they weren't able to create a profitable business model by targeting young people and Bing also gives us some references to articles about the bankruptcy. Now let's ask Google's Bard the same question. Bard gives us a lot more information about why Vice went bankrupt. They tell us when they filed for bankruptcy, that they've been searching for a buyer for a year, as well as four main specific reasons why the company went bankrupt. These reasons are declining advertising revenue, which Bing kind of touched on, overexpansion, a culture of secrecy, and management problems. This is just one example where you can see that Google's Bard tends to give you much more information back from the internet, and in the research that I've done, this tends to continue as you'll see in the rest of the video. I personally feel like Bard answered the question better here, and the only thing that Bing did better than Bard was give sources to the search. So I'm gonna give Bard an eight out of 10, just losing a point from not having sources, and give Bing a six because their answer just didn't answer the question with that much specific information. And if I really wanted to understand the answer to why Vice went bankrupt, I would need to go read the articles, which kind of makes the AI obsolete if I have to then go read more articles to fully answer my question. The next major grading point is speed of response. We want high quality responses quickly. So let's ask them both to give us a list of the most viewed Super Bowl halftime performances of all time and see how long it takes. Bard gives you this little star icon for a bit and then spits it out all at once. Whereas Bing thinks for a minute, tells you it's searching for the question, then once it has the answer, rather than giving it to you all at once, it types it out across the screen similarly to how ChatGPT4 does, which makes a lot of sense because Bing is based off of ChatGPT4. But because of these factors, Bing takes significantly longer to answer a question than Bard does. Now you might think, oh, just read it as it types, but at least for me, I have a hard time reading as it types, so I have to wait for it to finish typing before I can actually read the answer. We're gonna give Bard a nine because it's really, really fast, pretty much instantaneous, and Bing is only gonna get a four because it's really noticeably slow. In the time it takes Bing to tell you that it's searching for the query, Bard has already given you an answer. 
As far as the top five criteria go though, this is probably the least important one when deciding which you're gonna use, because they're both way faster than a human, but Bard again beats out Bing. The next criteria is does it consistently answer your questions? Are these great tools or just glorified versions of asking Siri for the weather? Well, I'm happy to report that they usually do a really good job of answering questions, and they even have a level of nuance in their answers that a casual researcher might not have. And we'll talk about that more in part four, but when comparing the two, Bard tends to outdo Bing at finding information from the internet. For example, Bard's numbers here about Burger King's growth are true, but Bing said it couldn't find those numbers. So I have to give Bard the win here with a nine, while Bing still gets a very respectable seven points because it can find pretty much most of the information on the internet, just not all of it. Now, it may seem like I'm being a Google Homer here because they've won each matchup thus far, but not all of these categories are created equally. Number four, accuracy, is probably the most important of all the attributes, and Bard struggles really badly here. So we just saw how Bard was so great at giving us those numbers about Burger King's advertising song's effectiveness and that they were really accurate. But when you look below at this section, you'll see that Bard just made some stuff up. As far as I could tell, Burger King has not publicly stated who sang the song, nor was it produced by a guy by the name of David Miami. And although I think it's likely that it's been viewed 100 million times on YouTube, no video of the ad on YouTube has more than 8 million views. So although the first part of Bard's response was extremely accurate, the second part was pretty much made up. To be fair, it's not all bad news. When I asked Bard and Bing how much money Motorola made in 2022, they gave me really accurate numbers for revenue at $9.11 billion and $1.36 billion when I clarified that I wanted profit. Like we mentioned earlier, Bard tends to be much more elaborative and wordy and defaults to throwing more information at you than Bing. As it did here, it answers the question in the first two lines, but goes on to blabber on and on about what Motorola does and such like that. Bing is much more succinct than Bard, and Bing also feels much more trustworthy because it has references to the sources that it's stating its facts from. This makes it really easy to double check Bing's work and make sure it's accurate. For example, I asked Bing if Jostens, you know, the graduation cap company, uses prison labor. I know it's a weird question, but bear with me. And they gave me this weird sentence about how they decide to use prison labor instead of prison labor. But because it gave me the source, I was able to go to the website Bing got it from and see that that source probably wasn't that great of a source. And then I knew that I could look elsewhere for the answer. Whereas you have no work cited on Bard, and yes, you can click on the Google it button, but then you have to manually search through the data just like normal versus being directed to it like you do on Bing. So I'm gonna give Bing a nine out of 10 for accuracy and Bard a four out of 10 for accuracy. The last criteria is the ability to interpret and complete complex tasks. Thus far, we have asked fairly simple questions. Give me a list for this, give me an answer about that. But what if we up the ante a little bit? Let's ask each to give us an in-depth analysis of Disney stock and if it's a buy or sell. Let's start with Bing. Bing gives us stock information and competitors and gives us a ticker symbol window, but doesn't go into depth about how Disney competes in the marketplace or what the individual numbers mean in terms of investing. And it refuses to give us any actual investment advice, which to be fair is probably legally smart, but it does get the numbers right, which is really good. On the other hand, Bard gave us multiple drafts of a full competitive analysis, which is really impressive. Also, that's another thing to note, Bard usually gives you multiple drafts. You can choose any of the three for any given query, whereas Bing just gives you one response. Bard's first draft doesn't give you super up-to-date stock data or anything like that, but it does do a great job at helping you understand how Disney's different industry segments make up their company as a whole, and it also does a great job at giving you a snapshot into the competitive marketplace that Disney finds itself in as far as its competition with Netflix, Amazon, Warner Media, and CBS. Bard actually gives you a buy recommendation based off of Disney's resources and core competencies rather than a fundamental number analysis, which is really interesting in my opinion. Nothing in this draft is consequently wrong either. But when you look at draft number two, Bard starts to give you numbers about Disney's fundamentals that are just blatantly wrong. Disney's revenue in 2022 was not 67.4 billion, it was 82.7 billion. Disney's earnings per share was not 2.03, it was 1.72. And Bard also got Disney's debt number wrong. So this analysis is pretty much completely worthless because of the inaccuracy of the numbers. Now, I would give Bard an 8 or a 9 if the second draft had correct numbers in it, but since those numbers were wrong, I can't give it more than a 3. And Bing did give us some general investment information, and it gave us prompts for follow-up questions, so it's going to get a 7. Not perfect yet, but still really, really good. So, which one is best, Bing or Bard? Well, some are going to argue that both are worth using, and it just matters what you prefer most. 
Does factual accuracy matter most to you? Then they'll say that Bing is definitely the right option because it's more accurate with its numbers and references. Or they're gonna say, well, if you need more general summaries of stuff, faster response times, don't wanna download Microsoft Edge, and exact facts are less important for your use case, then you'd probably be better off with Bard. But I strongly disagree with this and would recommend that you only use Bing's AI for research until Bard can increase its accuracy, since its effectiveness is pretty much nerfed because of its tendency to just blatantly lie to you. But I'll be keeping a close eye on both AIs in the coming months because the AI landscape is changing really quickly. And if Bard can fix its truth problem, I think it would be far superior to Bing. So make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the newest developments in AI. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.